My name is Dennis Garrity, and uh, I was the former director general at the World Agroforestry Center, and um, currently uh, Dryland's ambassador for the UN Convention on Combating Desertification. The subject that um, I'd like to discuss today with you is the whole effort of learning to cope as shifting cultivation systems become more intensified and uh, there is greater pressure on the land. Throughout the tropics, farming had always been a shifting cultivation system until very recently. Farmers would fallow their land as crop yields <clears throat> or weed pressures um, made it uh, very difficult for them to continue to get economic yields. And they would let the land restore itself by natural vegetation. And then some years later, often 10, 15, 20 years or more, they would come back to the same piece of land and uh, start the process of cultivation once again by clearance and often slash and burn. But in fact, this practice has been declining uh, across Africa and Asia for many years now because populations have increased and the uh, area available for, for farmers to cultivate has been steadily declining. And this is where the process of learning to cope with the intensification of these systems brings us to the issue of improved fallows. These have been a means by which farmers have evolved their ability to cultivate land under pressure in the absence of external inputs, oftentimes in remote areas. There was a brilliant book uh, called The African Husbandman, written by William Allen and published in the mid-1960s, which did an elegant uh, job of explaining how farmers rationally managed land in the pre-economic, um, pre-market days, uh, when Africa was universally a matter of uh, shifting cultivation and fallow rotation. And what um, Alan noted was that these systems were, in fact, sustainable. Sustainable as long as populations were low enough that farmers had adequate time for the fallows to restore the land. But that is not the case. It's not the case in Asia, and it's certainly not the case in most parts of Africa today, where farm sizes have been steadily declining, and we, we lack the opportunity for farmers to be able to fallow their land under natural conditions. So indeed, what we see in so many areas is a transition to continuous cultivation of maize and other cereal crops under a situation in which the yields are declining, the crops have very little access to good nutrition, <clears throat> and as you see in this slide, um, very, very poor uh, conditions and um, high wheat pressures as well. But in fact, um, farmers have tried to adapt, and many different types of improved fallow systems have been developed by them, as you see in this slide where um, uh, they use nitrogen-fixing species that are established during the latter parts of the cultivation cycle, um, as in this slide, Sespania sespan, which is a, a woody species that produces enormous amounts of nitrogen-rich biomass that farmers can incorporate into the soil before cultivating in the next cycle of maize production. The World Agroforestry Center and partners have done a lot of work on these improved fallow systems, and indeed, they can produce much higher yields than natural fallows, but they do require additional work, additional effort uh, in the process. Well, as farmers coped with these systems, many different variations have occurred, and one of the most interesting of these is the systems developed by farmers in eastern India, which involve the use of the nitrogen-fixing species Alnus nepalensis, as you see in this slide. Here is a situation where the trees evolved um, and <clears throat> were um, retained in the, culti in the cultivated fields when, when farmers cleared the land and were coppiced um, or pollarded by the farmers in cycle after cycle of fallow and cropping, fallow and cropping. The trees you see in this slide are actually um, 
on the order of um, a century old as farmers continue to retain them in the fields through successive cycles. And when they open the land, they obtain lots of, of timber and fuel wood from these systems as they, um, as they polar the trees, in addition to the biomass which supplies nutrients for their crop production systems. In addition to this system, uh, which is common in Nagaland in eastern India, there are many other systems that have been documented um, in the course of research on shifting cultivation and its intensification in Asia and in uh, Africa as well. Um, in fact, um, we now have uh, research conducted on these systems, as you see in this slide, for the last 30 years or so and a wide range of improved fallows that have been scientifically verified have also been generated, um, including the Sespania fallows, and a new concept which builds on the um, systems of simultaneous fallowing the land. For as farmers' land availability declines, they simply lose the opportunity to fallow at all. They must cultivate continuously their small parcels of land and therefore they need ways of biologically sustaining their yields during the crop uh, cycle, which is continuous <clears throat> and is never fallowed um, or almost never fallowed after that. Some of the variations of these improved fallow systems are relay planting of leguminous species uh, into uh, maize and other cereal crops to provide nitrogen during the crop season and uh, also um, uh, are incorporated for supplying nutrients in the following maize crop. Another major area that has gained a lot of attention uh, is the development of uh, simultaneous fallow systems with fertilizer trees, as you see in the, the right side of this picture, uh, where Gliricidia is a uh, nitrogen-fixing tree uh, intercropped with maize um, in, in, and tested in many parts of Africa and is now being scale, scaled up in countries like Malawi. Now, the um, Gliricidia systems involve planting seedlings um, or cuttings of the Gliricidia trees at high densities in the maize fields to supply uh, biomass during the dry season, which is incorporated into the maize crops during the wet season, as you see in this slide here of a uh, Malawian farmer harvesting his maize with the Gliricidia trees coming up in the latter stages of the maize cycle. Indeed, we find that these systems, under no fertilizer applications, can um, enormously increase crop yields. And this slide shows the fact that uh, the systems actually can uh, maintain uh, yields up to around uh, four tons per hectare, whereas they, um, in, in non-fertilized -cultiv non cultivated systems, decline to under one ton per hectare. Likewise, um, there are uh, systems that have been developed and recognized by farmers uh, that involve full canopy trees, such as Acacia albida or Phytherbia albida, which is a tree that is maintained as a simultaneous fallow in maize and, and, and sorghum and millet fields in millions of farms across Africa. And this species exhibits reverse phenology it is actually dormant during the wet season, so it does not shade the crops, but it foliates in the dry season, producing a nitrogen, um, a, a nitrogen fertilizer, which drops uh, to the soil at the time of cultivation. So therefore, we can see, as in this slide, a, um, a combination of fast-growing, high biomass um, uh, tree, uh, nitrogen-fixing trees like Lyricidia that are pollarded or coppiced or pruned during the crop season, and full canopy trees which grow up and provide a uh, natural form of biological fertilization without having to be pruned, and so there's very little labor involved. These are the kind of adoptions which farmers are um, receptive to and which scientists have been evaluating and which are now being scaled up through programs <clears throat> throughout the continent of Africa and particularly in the drylands where um, the use of nitrogen fertilizer is a very risky and often unprofitable um, proposition. So what we've been talking about is a vision 
of a more ecologically intensive farming that integrates trees directly into crop and livestock systems, a vision that we now call evergreen agriculture. Uh, systems that are, in fact, double-story systems, where trees are there present at higher densities in the crop fields to provide a simultaneous fallow system that can help farmers cope with the enormous pressures on the land as populations continue to increase in the 21st century. Thank you very much.